excited to thank our sponsor, Showtime. They have this amazing show called I'm Dying Up Here. It airs on Sundays at 10, 9 central, so please tune in. Our next comedian is an amazing lady. She has a new special out called Pizza Mind. Please put your hands together for Sashir Zameda. <laughs> Praise Madam God. Um, I've been thinking about body hair lately. Yeah. You're good. Because I've been shaving my parts since I was a teenager, but it wasn't until recently when I was like, why? <laughs> like, I'm not going into surgery every month. Like, what is this for? And I did some research as to when women in America started shaving their body hair. And it happened in the early 1900s because razor companies weren't making enough money just selling razors to men for their facial hair. So they started selling to women and they had to make up all these reasons, reasons why women had to shave because it wasn't a natural inclination for us to do that. So they had all these ads that they would put out and it would just be like, if you don't shave, you'll be ugly, you'll be stinky, you'll be dead and alone, you'll be a spinster. And it was just like all these horrible things, really like screwing with women's head to think that they were disgusting for doing a natural thing. Like I saw a literal print ad that was an old woman sitting by herself at a restaurant, hair coming out of her pits, and then two clean shaven women by the bar like, what's wrong with her? Oh, you haven't heard? She doesn't know how to shave, ha 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 and it worked. They brainwashed us to think that we were disgusting for doing a natural thing. And I get it, advertising's very powerful. Like, I, I just heard recently that Sprite in America is specifically advertised to black people, which makes sense because all the billboards have hip hop legends on them, all the radio ads have hip hop underneath them, and whenever I see a lemon and lime, I wanna play basketball. So, <laughs> they got me. <laughs> And I did more research on hair, because I was high. And I was like, got to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> and I found that Native Americans used to keep all their hair long, because it helped them with battle and with hunting, because they were more aware of their surroundings. And if anything came up to them to attack them, they would feel it quicker than they would if they didn't have hair at all. So if that's the case, women of all people should have all of the hair. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> We're at risk for getting attacked just for leaving the house. If I'm gonna get attacked from 50 feet away and someone's running up on me, I want their body to create wind and if I get a leg tickle, I know it's time to go. <laughs> for safety purposes, I wanna be Chewbacca level hairy, scalp to toe. <laughs> Um, I'm also in a relationship that's uh, two and a half years long. Thank you. <laughs> I think we'll give it another two and a half years before we call it quits. <laughs> it's hard. Relationships are so hard. And I know they take a lot of work to be healthy and successful, but I feel like I'm doing most of the work because I'm fixing him. <laughs> And I don't wanna be one of those girlfriends that's like, I need to change my man, I need to fix him, because I love him the way he is, but everything he does is wrong. <laughs> and I need to change him. I like for people to take their shoes off when they enter my home. And he does that for the most part, but sometimes he forgets. And I have wood floors and one big rug in the middle of my living room. And we were about to leave my house and he goes, babe, I have my shoes on, but don't worry, I'm standing on the rug. <laughs> and I was like, what logic are we working with? When he saw the wood floors, did he see lava? Like what? <laughs> How is that okay? 
And so I explained to him, like, no, babe, uh, I don't want people to bring their shoes in because it's going to track in dirt. I don't want to have to clean up more than I have to. And he looked at me like I was explaining new math to him. Like, <laughs> I'd never heard that concept before. And I can't tell if I'm fixing him for me or for his next girlfriend. <laughs> because if we break up and he dates somebody else, he's gonna take his shoes off at the door. And she's gonna be like, he's so clean. <laughs> he's so conscientious. No bitch, that was me. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> Anything a guy does that's like considerate or conscientious, he's doing it because at one point in time he made a mistake and then some woman yelled at him. <laughs> and if you're not laughing, it's because you're currently being yelled at. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this nail polish that can detect date rape drugs? Yeah, uh, if you haven't, it was invented by these college students. And the idea is that you paint your nails in preparation for what could be the worst night of your life. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> and then if you go to a bar or a club, you put, and you feel like someone may have tampered with your drink, you put your finger in the drink, and if the nail color changes to a different color, then you know someone in that bar thinks you're pretty. <laughs> it's like, what a compliment. <laughs> I need to go back to therapy. Uh, I got in a fight with my therapist. Not my fault. Um, <laughs> what happened was I wanted to take a break because I was going to be traveling for a few months and I did, didn't want to do the phone sessions I like in person. So I told her, let's take a break and then we'll reassess when I come back in the fall. And she goes, oh, I'm not your boyfriend. I don't take breaks. What? Which is a sassy thing for someone to say if I'm paying them. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I don't really know what to do because I don't want to come back. So I guess I'm done forever. And then she started yelling at me, started listing all the reasons why I need therapy and why I need her. And it was so strange, this attack was like washing over me. But it was also weird because I felt like the work we had done together had gotten me to an emotional point where I was like, this has nothing to do with me. I will not let her put her anger and her emotional baggage on me or my journey. She's trying to sign us up for a codependent relationship that I did not ask for. And then I said that out loud. And she lost it. Lost her mind, kept yelling. And I was waiting for her to stop to be like, where do you want the last check? Because I'm never coming back here again. And she didn't stop, so I just like inched my way to the door as she's still screaming. And the last thing she said to me was, fine, go leave. You'll be just like your father. Oh. Which is great news. <laughs> because we also talked about how I subconsciously keep looking for men who are just like my father. Turns out this whole time, I'm just like my father. <laughs> I don't need to find a man to do what I can do myself. <laughs> that means I graduated therapy, right? I became my father. <laughs> I'm glad to be in a relationship for multiple reasons. One is because I was so bad at the chase. I was so bad at like talking to guys and, and flirting. I would do this thing where I'd go to a bar and I'd basically have an emotional one night stand where I'd get drunk and instead of opening up my legs to a stranger, I would open up my heart and my soul and my mind and divulge way too much information about myself. And just stuff they didn't need to know, like, mm, my dad, mm, when I was nine. My therapist said I should do this, but I never do, like way too much. But they would never leave immediately, so I'd be like, they're into it. <laughs> 
And we would talk and talk and talk, and I'd be like so empty and drained by the end of it and be like, wow, we have something strong here. This is a strong bond. I don't know if we're gonna be a thing, but we're gonna be friends for life. And then the guys would never call to hang a second time. But I shouldn't be surprised, because it's like my mom always said, why would a man want to buy a cow when he already knows how emotionally damaged that cow is? <laughs> I was talking to a guy in a bar, and I was just listening intently to what he was saying, but I guess my face fell into a neutral pose because he called me on it. And he goes, oh, you must suffer from resting bitch face. Has anyone gotten that? Yeah, it sucks. I hate that that term even exists. Like if a woman's not smiling all the time or looking happy all the time, she looks like a bitch. Which is also crazy because I know what I look like when I'm being bitchy. I look like this. <laughs> That's my active bitch face. <laughs> so to say my resting face is bitchy is an outlandish claim. Also, my face is resting because it's tired. It's so tired from smiling all the time, or being told to smile all the time, or waiting for my turn to speak in a room full of men, or apologizing for things that I'm not actually sorry for, but my speech is conditioned to be apologetic for even taking up space. It's tired, let it rest. And I wanted to explain all this to the guy I was talking to, but I didn't want to prove his point by being a bitch about it. <laughs> so I just said, oh, that's so funny that you say that. This whole time we've been talking, I noticed you had resting rape face. <laughs> <laughs> also, I noticed that my nail color changed, and thank you for the compliment. <laughs> all right, thank